Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike. Thanks for spending a piece of your day with me today. It's the final Halloween Ends update. We made it to the top, Greg. And I'm so excited. Tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, we are going to see, with so many of you guys in the theaters, Halloween Ends. It premiered last night, and there are some reactions coming out, some of which we will talk about today. We were not there, obviously. Not invited, not liked are kind at these things. But some people did get to see it last night. I'm happy that we're just seeing it with you guys. That's gonna be a fun experience. Uh, and then obviously we're gonna have the review up, we're gonna have a spoiler review up, we're gonna have breakdown videos, we're gonna have all the shit. If you don't like the Halloween Ends content, you're not gonna like probably the next 10 days or so of the channel. We will have our typical horror month stuff going on as well at the same time. But yeah, it's time. It's, 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 this is a big moment. It's a big, huge moment. I've got a big, huge appetite for it and uh do you think i was gonna say cock so let's go trick or treating let's go fucking drinking let's all go in pumpkin head on vhs because halloween never ends halloween never ends halloween never ends yeah The trick, William Potter, is not minding that it hurts. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that was said about the movie that's leaking out on Twitter about it. No spoilers. No spoilers, please. It's a waste of good movie watching. Uh, but first off, we go to the land of Twitter where everyone's happy and free. There's a character, Frank Fox says, there's a character in Halloween Ends who absolutely should have been introduced in Kills or in 2018. Their arc is not earned at all. You gotta imagine they're talking about Corey there, right? Uh, the, the newcomer, the one that's been so much focus and we don't even know who the hell he is. Uh, you gotta imagine that that's what's going on there, which is something we fear a little bit. We fear change. Chelsea Rebecca, who is awesome from uh, Dead Meat, says Halloween Ends is deeply weird and that's all I'll say until more people see it. Deeply weird. Not bad. That doesn't necessarily mean bad. Not necessarily. Mostly. Mostly. Louise Spoke, I can't say that, says Halloween Ends is unexpected as fuck and I love it. It's a positive one. I can't believe the guts everybody involved with this film had in order to get it made. That's scary. Perfect and unique trilogy. Laurie Strode and Michael Myers are eternal icons. And once again, I'm here to ask you, are Michael Myers and Laurie Strode gonna fuck in this movie? <laughs> like, I saw, I've seen some, some of the stuff I've come across that people are just like so shocked. So, so, so shocked with what they saw. I'm like, I, and, and things like this saying, I can't believe the guts it took to make this happen. And this guy even uh, loved it. So <laughs> I'm like, at this point, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Now, we might see the kitchen fight scene turn into like a broke back mountain moment. They're fucking wrestling. And the next thing you know, someone's ripping someone's pants off. Beans at breakfast is going to be really awkward tomorrow. I really just don't know what to expect. I don't actually think that's going to happen despite the erotic talk. Uh, but Diana, Darcy, the male ghoul, which from Joe Bob, I had no idea from last drive-in. Uh, was in this movie, but she tweeted, so my death scene got cut, and they said it would be part of the special features later, plus my character gets her own chapter in the novelization, which is cool. Uh, I did not know she was in the movie. I did not know she got killed in the movie. I cannot wait to see that happen. Uh, she's rad, and that'll be cool. Also, speaking of the novel novelization, Paul Brad Logan, who wrote the novelization and co-writer of Halloween Ends, is going to be on the show in the coming weeks. Uh, we have an interview scheduled with him, so I'm really excited to talk to him about the novelization and the script and whatever wild swings we're about to see them take. Matt Landsman says, as someone who loved Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills and was tremendously excited for Halloween Ends, and this is important because I think what he's saying here is, hey, I'm not that dude. You know, I'm not the dude who walked in here and was like, this movie's going to suck because Halloween Kills sucked and I had everything. I'm not that person. I'm not saying everybody who hated Halloween Kills feels that way. I'm just saying he's saying that's not me. I love both the previous movies. It breaks my heart to report that the film is a massive disappointment. I'm practically speechless at what I just watched. Major bummer. What the fuck? Ew. I'm... That is a tidbit fucking scary for me. As someone who's loved the other two movies and wasn't negative about them, is disappointed. And the whole, like, I don't know what I just watched. I'm speechless. Speech potatoes. I'm speechless about what I just watched. That's, it's given me like, and I'm not saying the movie's gonna be this, but it is giving me like Rob Zombie Halloween 2 vibes. The reactions coming out of that. Some people like, I fucking loved it. That was so ballsy. And then other people like, what the fuck? Did you really just do that? 
you know, I'm getting major H2 reaction vibes out of people. And again, not saying that. And we knew it was going to surprise, shock, and be divisive. Speaking of which, Nick's Flicks fix ins. Nick's Flicks fix it. Stop making your name so complicated. It says, Halloween Ends is going to be very divisive. Part of it is a satisfying conclusion to Lori and Michael's story. The other part is an interesting direction. I didn't expect the film to go, but it doesn't feel like anything like a Halloween movie. Ha, ah, I did not want to hear that. And the two stories don't mesh well. Divisive, we knew that. Satisfying conclusion, okay. An interesting direction that doesn't feel like a Halloween movie, fucking bad. Don't want to hear that. Don't like that. And the two stories don't mesh well. So it sounds like there's definitely the the capper of this trilogy. And then whatever the fuck else they're doing. Um, hopefully it's cool. Uh, this person did not like it. And a lot of people seem not to so far. Um, another thing I read. Now this comes from Reddit. Some of the Reddit reviews I'm reading. This, this one particular person said that. Uh, they say that people are going to hate the movie. That's essentially the last Jedi of the Halloween franchise was scares me right in my nutsack. Uh, it does a bunch of things that are divisive. Corey gets a lot of focus, which we probably knew that I, I won't read too much of that. Cause I don't, I don't want to even sneak in the spoilers a little bit, but they do say that the kills in this one are leagues more brutal and savage than Halloween kills, which is pretty goddamn shocking. I did not expect to hear that. That is a surprise for me. nutsack says, I'm not joking, it's fucking insane how gory this one is. I'm not overstating that either, I legitimately mean it. <laughs> I really mean this! It's absolutely mental. Which, uh, pretty cool. I'm excited to hear that. That pleases me lots. I can't wait to see what Christopher Nelson did with that, and hopefully it's gnarly. Uh, coming out of the last theater experience I had, which is Terrifier 2, it will be shocking if something shocks me after watching that mashed potato frenzy of fucktown. But... It's good to hear that it's really gory. Uh, bad to hear. You don't want to hear The Last Jedi in response to how people are going to feel about this movie. I definitely don't want to sit through fighting and all the shit that, that can come with a movie that's this important. But I think it's 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 going to fucking happen either way, man. Uh, and the, the way I take these reviews is, and everything I've read is like, I'm not I'm not necessarily surprised. There, there was a part of me that thought that thought that like it was being overstated. Maybe, you know what I mean? Like the device of the crazy, the anger, maybe it's just being overstated. Um, but when you prepare people for this, the way that they've prepared people for it to be strange and they have prepared people. Uh, this was no walking into Halloween three and where the fuck's Michael Myers? I don't know. We, by the way, we forgot. We, we didn't bring Michael Myers. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's like, how's this motherfucker going to run a daycare? Don't like kids. It's hard to say how I feel at the moment reading this and hearing this stuff because like i said i am i'm surprised at the level of almost vitriol and shock that i'm seeing from some reactions about like oh my god they just fucking did that they just did that so it's not like a slow narrative choice it's not like a, oh the movie only focuses on this or that apparently something shocking happens like apparently some particular part of the end of this movie has people going what the fuck uh, and some people liking it, and some people, uh, it seems like so far the majority, and just from scattered reactions, uh, did not like it. The only thing I don't like, I'm up for anything. I'm up to watch them do anything, and here's why. Because we've had a million fucking Halloween movies try to recreate the original. John Carpenter's tired of people trying to recreate the original. It's its own fucking movie. That being said, the things that concern me are just like, if you weren't gonna make a Halloween movie, why, why did, why did we make it a Halloween movie? You know what I mean? I hope, I, I'm just saying, I hope I don't come out of the theater feeling that way. Like, okay, David Gordon Green wanted to tell this beautiful story, and maybe it was a cool story, but it had nothing to fucking do with Halloween. And that's going to be upsetting for me, because I'm like, man, this is, you, do you know how cool of a chance it is to do a Halloween film? Like, make it a Halloween film. I, I hate the, I hate hearing that it doesn't feel like a Halloween film. That scares the shit out of me. So I really hope that that's not the situation. But again, I've been positive all the way. I'm not going to not be positive now on the last day um, beforehand. I, I, I fucking really hope I love this movie and I hope it rules uh, and, I, and I hope it closes things out. Uh, but getting, it's getting scarier, getting scarier. I, I'm going to be a little sweatier uh, going in to the movie theater than I thought I was going to be for this one. But Here's the thing, it may not be the last one, and we have some news about that, and we knew it wasn't going to be the last one, but apparently from what they're saying, this franchise is alive and fucking well, really no matter what happens uh, tomorrow night at the movies. Uh, Deadline reported recently that Halloween Ends looks to slay 50 million plus opening, finally bringing to life a sleepy fall box office. Now, 50 million is more 
than it made than Halloween Kills made. Halloween Kills opened a 49.4 and f- ended up, it says, with 92 million stateside. Uh, also, it was on Peacock as well. So this movie also going directly to Peacock day and date, but is 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 forecasted so far to make just as much. So there was no fall off from Kills. Um, everything's on the up and up. We're still looking at at, at a market for Halloween that is everything you would want for there to be sequels or for someone to pick it up. I don't want sequels to end with Blumhouse. This story's done. It's been told. We know that's not going to happen. But I do want to see the franchise go other places, which we'll talk about. We'll have videos about whether it's TV or it's movies or whatever. Uh, That is great news that the movie's going to do well because it means that Trankus will have pretty good bargaining power for who they take the franchise to next. And I do hope they take it to someone new. But it's nice to know that Trankus is not going to be dealing with a situation like they did with the Weinsteins with Dimension where it's someone uh, coming to them and telling them this is what you need to do, trying to take it direct to video and all this shit like that. They can, they really, if the movie does well, like like if this is saying it's going to, they will really have their choice of what they do with the franchise next, which is nice to see uh, the Akkads be able to do that. Scout Taylor Compton and Daniel Harris were on the red carpet for the Halloween Ends uh, premiere. Scout Taylor Compton's talking about, yeah, I just can't believe it's coming to an end. And Danielle Harris says, no, 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 what are you talking about? It's not coming to an end. She's like, I still have a fighting chance. I have a fighting chance to to for one more Jamie Lloyd movie. So she says that and she's laughing and they're joking, but I'm sure that behind the scenes, uh, and I think there was there was a bit of news before that she had pitched her idea about bringing Jamie back to uh, a cod. So at least in her mind, she has a fighting chance that that could possibly happen. It wasn't completely rejected at the door, uh, but you know how these things go. There will be a thousand ideas and a thousand scripts and everything else that come through the door uh, for a cod after this is over with and whatnot. But it's nice to hear that that's an opportunity, that's a possibility. Now, whether you want that could be a personal choice, whatever. But I still think that, in my opinion, Jamie Lloyd, the character of Jamie Lloyd, uh, and Daniel Harris was so good as that character. I, I would love to see them get an, a, a really good wrap up done well. If they could fi- figure out a way to do some sort of legacy sequel and tie it all together and have it make sense, I'd be a hundred percent down for that personally. Depending on who was involved with it, uh, because that was such an interesting part of the Halloween franchise and where we're at. And Jamie Lee gets all of this glory you know over and over and over again and and rightfully slow so uh she's laurie strode but you know the justice for 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 jamie lloyd is a real thing for me and i i think that uh that would be a really cool thing to see to see that character get some love too uh because much like matt skiba carried blink and these years betwixt tom uh, and deserves some love for that i feel like jamie lloyd deserves some love for carrying the franchise while jamie was away you know what i'm saying yeah yeah but yeah, guys, that's that's the news. That's the update. Tomorrow we see Halloween ends. We see it for ourselves. And God, I hope we love it. I hope you love it. I hope you have an amazing time. And even if it's not perfect, I hope we can just enjoy for the last time for at least a few years seeing Michael Myers on that big fucking screen or on you know your TV at home, uh, whatever. But having that that newness, that oh my God, I don't know what's about to unfold in front of me is going to be a beautiful feeling, and I'm so excited for that. Uh, I hope I walk out of it on the other end feeling great, feeling fine. But we'll see what happens, man. Uh, It's a good time to be alive. I can't wait to talk about all of it with you guys and with Jay. We're going to have such a great time. And uh, uh, I hope you guys have an amazing day. We'll see you on the other side of fucking Halloween, man. Shit. Halloween never ends. Suck my fucking dick. And I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box. But suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS, cause Halloween never ends.